Maud Hart Lovelace, author of the Betsy Tacy books, spent her childhood in Minnesota, in the town of Mankato, where she was born April 25, 1892. Maud wrote a series of ten books about a girl named Betsy Ray, growing up in a small town at the turn of the century. In the first of the four books, we learn the town was called Deep Valley and Betsy lived in a house on Hill Street. Betsy, on the right with pigtails, lived with her mother and father, big sister Julia and baby sister Margaret. And she became best friends with the new girl who moved in across the street, Tacy Kelly. The two girls did everything together, like making a playhouse from an enormous wooden box and cutting out paper dolls from old magazines. The summer Betsy and Tacy were six, another new girl moved into the neighborhood. Her nickname was Tib. So now there were three best friends, Betsy, Tacy, and Tib. Tib, on the right, had pretty blonde curls and wore lace dresses. Tacy, in the middle, had long red ringlets and was terribly shy. Betsy, on the left, had short brown braids and lots of good ideas for things to do, some of which got them into mischief, such as making everything pudding, which had in it a bit of everything the girls found in the kitchen, or cutting off locks of their own hair to give each other as proof they were best friends. In the third book, Betsy, Tacy, and Tib turned ten years old and began to show they were growing up. They made friends with a Syrian girl on the other side of the big hill. And the book ends with the crowning of a queen, as well as an important lesson for all the girls in kindness and fair play. In the fourth book, stories of going downtown are the most exciting, like Tibbs' ride in Deep Valley's first automobile, and the thrill of watching a traveling road show play in the opera house and even getting to perform in a play themselves. Maud Hart Lovelace long ago told all these stories to her own little girl because, you see, the Betsy Tacy books are actually based on Maud's own childhood in Minnesota. For instance, when Maud wrote that Betsy went to the opera house, it was the real opera house in Mankato that Maud herself had been to as a child. This fine old building is no longer standing today. And just as Betsy's father ran a shoe store in the books, so did Maud's father own this shoe store in Mankato, the way it looked years ago. Like Betsy, who celebrated her birthday in a fancy new party dress, so Maud posed on her birthday in 1898 in her first silk dress with lace. And a few years later, she posed beside her real best friend, Frances Kinney, who was Tacy with long red ringlets in the books. Betsy's house on Hill Street in the books is actually Maud Hart's own home as it looks today on Center Street in Mankato. And across the street is the house where Frances lived, just as Tacy had across the street from Betsy. In the book, when Tib moved into the neighborhood, she lived around the corner in this fine home. Notice on the second floor a small decoration on the right-hand side of the house, because in real life the decoration still exists, even though the rest of the house has been changed over the years. Here on Byron Street, around the corner from Center Street, was the home of Marjorie Gerlach, who became Tib in the book. A map of make-believe Deep Valley shows Betsy's home in the middle with Tacy's home across Hill Street toward the bottom. And a map of Mankato today shows where the real houses are. Maud Hart lived at the number six on Center Street. Frances Kinney lived across Center Street at the number seven. And Marjorie Gerlach lived around the corner at the number ten. The big hill in the book was quite an adventure for three girls to go exploring on their own. Today the hill is still there, of course, but now called Sumner Hill, 
and has many fine homes built on top. Because Maud wrote true facts about her own life, but added make-believe things to make the stories even more fun to read, her books are called historical fiction. Just like the everything pudding, historical fiction has everything from the author's imagination as well as many facts. From reading Maud's historical fiction, we can learn much about what real children must have been like in the early 1900s. For example, what children did for fun. Betsy and Tacy sold pretty bottles filled with sand. They had dyed different colors. They played dress-up in their mother's clothes just for fun. They planned a big parade with music and refreshments and even a queen. At school in the 1900s, the boys' playground was on the right side of the building and the girls played on the left side of the building. But Tacy was so bashful the first day of kindergarten, she tried to run all the way back home. So the teacher let her sit right in the same seat with Betsy. And after that, Tacy liked school, too. All children performed in a big program put on for their parents. Betsy and Tacy did their cat duet. And on the last day of school, they went home singing, No more Latin, no more French. No more sitting on a hardwood bench. Next, what did children do downtown in the 1900s? A big treat was stopping downtown at Heinz Restaurant for vanilla ice cream, or going downtown to visit a friend in a fancy hotel, or Christmas shopping downtown and pretending to buy the most expensive gifts when in fact they each had only one dime to spend. Finally, what did children think of the big outside world beyond their own small town? Aunt Dolly from far away Milwaukee was thought to live in a palace. She had so many fine clothes. And actors from the outside world were held in awe by the children who stood outside the opera house door. Some children in Deep Valley were mean and cruel to foreigners from the outside world. But Betsy, Tacy, and Tib were kind to the new immigrants with their different language and unusual ways. And when the girls read in the newspaper about a new king from faraway Spain, they wrote him a letter and celebrated with a birthday party in his honor. So we see that historical fiction gives us a glimpse into the past, what children did for fun at school and downtown, and what they thought of the outside world. Maud's next four books, illustrated by Vera Neville, tell about Betsy and her friends through their high school years. Betsy, Tacy, and Tib were in the center of a whirl of teenage activities. Just like Maud Hart in the middle, Frances Kinney on the right, and Marjorie Gerlach on the left, during their own high school days in Mankato. The last two books are about Betsy's trip to Europe and about her wedding. Betsy's wedding was the book all Betsy Tacy fans had been waiting for. And a copy of Maud's own wedding dress was made and today can be seen at the Historical Society in Mankato. In the book, Betsy Ray married Joe Willard and became Betsy Ray Willard. In real life, Maud Hart married Delos Lovelace and became Maud Hart Lovelace. After their wedding, Delos and Maud's first apartment was in South Minneapolis at 2400 Aldrich Avenue, described as Betsy and Joe's Bow Street apartment in the book. Then the Lovelaces bought a house on 25th Street near Hennepin in South Minneapolis described in the book as the Canoe Place Cottage, but not in the exact location Maud wrote about. DeLoss Lovelace was a writer and newspaper reporter in Minneapolis. Once Maud herself began to write stories, she wrote many other books in addition to the Betsy Tacy books. Sometimes DeLoss and Maud wrote books together. The Lovelace's daughter, Marion, 
was born after the family moved to New York, where they lived for many years. But Maud told Marion so many stories about Minnesota that she soon wrote them down in the Betsy Tacy books. These books help us compare small-town life for children in Mankato long ago to Mankato as it is now. When we are reminded of the past, we think of little Betsy Ray, whose biggest thrill was to go to the library, which was brand new in 1902, spick and span, just full of books. And this Carnegie building still stands today, even though it is no longer used as a library. In 1977, a new library opened in Mankato, and the section for children's books is called the Maud Hart Lovelace Wing. In 1961, Maud herself returned to Mankato for a reunion with Francis on the left and Marjorie on the right. Just like Betsy, with Tacy on the left and Tib on the right, had been drawn by Lois Linsky for the books. In 1980, a big mural on the wall was dedicated at the library with many favorite scenes from the Betsy Tacy books. But just two days later, Maud died, March the 11th, 1980, at age 87 in California, where she had gone after New York. She was buried in Mankato. Both Francis and Marjorie have been dead for many years. But the warmth of friendship lives on through the many adventures of Betsy, Tacy, and Tib. And Betsy's childhood days give us a perfect picture of small-town family life at the turn of the century. Betsy Ray, just like Maud Hart, dreamed of becoming a writer when she grew up. Maud Hart Lovelace, by writing all about Betsy Ray, made both their dreams come true. <laughs>